Breaking details about the arrest of OSU star Justin Blackman. Here's a look at police dash cam video from the arrest. Many wonder what's next for the former OSU star. It's disappointing, disturbing, and you're seeing a case of a man flushing his career down the toilet. First round pick Justin Blackman arrested on DUI charges this morning. All I can say is I'm just praying that he can, you know, get the help that he needs. And here's the worst part about all of this, guys. Justin Blackman forfeited over $11.5 million because of the way his contract was constructed. Up to this point, Blackman has forfeited somewhere between 11 and $12 million in money based on what people say is his current addiction. He threw $10 million down the drain for just nonsense, and it even got to the point where you had people stating that football, quote-unquote, is not a priority in his life. Over 10-plus years ago, there was a guy who was absolutely terrorizing the college football world. No, like seriously, in just two years, he had 233 catches for over 3,300 yards. I mean, this guy was utterly ridiculous, and to simply put it here, he couldn't be stopped. In those two remarkable seasons he had in 2010 and 11, he won the Bolitnikoff back-to-back. -back. For those of you that don't know, the Bolitnikoff Award, it goes to college football's best wide receiver. And I can't express to you guys enough how insane it is to win that award twice, because after you win it the first time, People, they don't want to vote for you again, and these teams that you just dominated the season before, they start double-teaming you and triple-teaming you. But guess what? It didn't matter, because like I told you guys a couple seconds ago, he couldn't be stopped. When he was in college, he was already drawing comparisons to Terrell Owens and Andre Johnson, and that's some good company to be in. But what had everybody intrigued with this young man is they didn't know how good it could be, and most people thought he could go down as one of the best wide receivers to ever suit up and play the sport of football. He was that good, and I want to give y'all my perspective on him when I was growing up watching college football. I was around seven years old when I was able to start keeping up with college football and understanding the game. And when I was seven, that was in the year of 2000. And when this guy was playing college football, it was in 2010, 2011, so I was around 10 or 11. And I remember as a 10 year old on a Thursday or Friday night trying to figure out what time Oklahoma State played because I had to see Justin Blackman. He was my CTV, and based off of what I saw in college, I thought he was going to go on and dominate the NFL as well. And you can't call me crazy for saying that because NFL teams, they did as well. And that is why he was selected with the fifth overall pick in the 2012 NFL draft. A wide receiver getting selected in the top five in the NFL draft. It's rare to say the least. Everything was looking great for this guy. Had an outstanding college football career, just got selected high in the NFL draft. That also equates to a lot of money. It's looking like he's going to be one of the best wide receivers to ever play the game of football, but he hit some bumps in the road. And he actually stated himself, quote unquote, one of the main things I would say that I had a problem with was just making poor decisions, making a selfish decision and not thinking about the long term of it. He got arrested quite a few times and what drove everybody crazy and it even drove me crazy when I was doing all my research and gathering information for this video is number one, it was bonehead reasons and decisions and number two, he never learned from it. As far as it goes for wide receivers in the NFL, he might be the biggest bust of all time and also the biggest what if of all time as well. Not only his football career, but his life, whew, it went downhill, and I mean it went downhill fast. He just kept making bad decision after bad decision after bad decision, and it had everybody asking the same question. What went wrong? And there's many more questions people have been asking even till this day. But however, it all circles back to the one, and I mean the one big question we're going to try to get to the bottom of in today's video. What really happened to Justin Blackman? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hope all of you having a great and fantastic day. If not, hope this video can make it a little bit better. And I had the comment. I don't know where it went. I thought I screenshotted it, but I lost it. One of you, the viewers, you recommended this video. So if you did, shout out to you. You know who you are, but I can't find the comment. And when I first saw the comment of somebody saying, yo, Matt, you got to make a video on Justin Blackman, I had immediate flashbacks. I also immediately added it to my notes because it had me intrigued because I was like, yeah, what happened to him? He was a legend when I was growing up. And of course, by now, I've already done my research, gathered information for the video, but let's just say you guys are in for a treat with this one because I think Justin Blackman, just the name alone, if you're a big-time college football fan, it's going to scratch some back part of your brain. That name should ring a bell, or at least it should. And as always, leave some recommendations for some videos you want to see or story videos you want to see because your boy Matt is a fan of the people and I want to give the people what they want. I've really been enjoying making these throwback college football story videos myself and it seems like you guys are enjoying them, so that's just a win-win. If you're new to the channel or simply you've been watching and you're not subscribed, if you like story videos, college football, sports in general, consider joining our community. We'd love to have you here and I think you enjoy your time. I've jibber-jabbered enough though. Strap in, buckle up, get you a snack, get you a popcorn, get your favorite meal you like to even watch a video because trust me, 
me. I do the same thing, but all right, Matt, blah, blah, shut the crap up. Now that for that dough. Let's get in. Woo! Man, oh man, we got a good old Justin Blackman. And come on, man, you already know to get into his story. We gotta throw it all the way back to where things started. Mr. Justin Blackman played his high school football for Plainville High School, which is located in Oklahoma. And this is where things already start to get interesting in our story because he was an all-around athlete. Played football, baseball, track and field, basketball, you name it, he did it. And I also saw in some articles, according to some of his previous high school coaches, he was good at snowboarding as well. Where did that fun fact come from? I don't know, but do what you please with that information. I just think it goes to prove my point that he was an all-around athlete. And with him being the supreme talent that he was, he didn't just play wide receiver in high school, but he also played cornerback in special teams. And check these numbers out. As a wide receiver, he had 61 catches for over 1,500 yards and 14 touchdowns. That's great alone. But he also had not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but six touchdowns on special teams and four, count on four pick sixes as a cornerback. I thought that was pretty unique, and the reason I throw that in there is because a lot of schools that were recruiting him, they were wanting him to play cornerback, not wide receiver. And one of the schools that piqued his interest was Colorado, but like I said, they wanted him to play cornerback, and he didn't want to do that. Another fun fact to throw in there is that other schools were recruiting him not to play cornerback or wide receiver, but to play basketball. However, the Oklahoma State Cowboys, they called him on Thanksgiving Day to be exact, and they told him, hey, we want you to play wide receiver, and that sounded good to him, and that's where he decided to commit and sign. And from there on out, the rest is history, and we'll get into that history in just a second, but I want to touch on this. Unlike most of these videos we make, Justin Blackman was not, and I can't emphasize this enough, he was not a highly regarded and highly touted recruit coming out of high school. He was only listed as a three-star, the 82nd best wide receiver in his class, and outside of the top 700 nationally. I wouldn't go as far as to saying these scouts thought he was a straight up bum, but they most certainly didn't think he was anything special. Your typical blue bloods, big time schools, whatever you want to call them, they didn't even offer him. Here's a look at some of his offers. Oklahoma State, Colorado, Missouri, Northern Iowa, and Kansas State. So I think you get the point here. None of your typical big timers like Oklahoma, Texas around his area where he was playing. Ohio State, Alabama, Georgia, USC, etc. And now that we're talking about it, it has me thinking and questioning, I wonder why he wasn't so highly sought after. Because let's break it down and look at it. He had decent size, 6'2", 190, coming out of high school. He was insanely fast, and also, he had the numbers to back it up. Hmm. That's really peculiar. I don't know why he was so underrated. Maybe it's because, and I know nothing about Plainfield High School, maybe they're not a big time high school. Who knows? If you know anything about it, let us know in the comment section. But I digress. We got to get a move on. You get the point. Heavily underrated recruit. And you could also say him being underrated and him going to a school like Oklahoma State, it turned out in his favor because they made him the guy. Whereas when you're a five-star recruit and you go to Texas, Oklahoma, or Ohio State, you're competing with other four and five star recruits and you're just trying to get playing time. And I don't think that's a bad thing because iron sharpens iron, but it can also equate to less of an opportunity. In the year of 2008, Blackman, his first year at Oklahoma State, this is where he redshirted, so there's not too much to say there. But heading into 2009, this is when he starts to play a little bit. There's not too much to say for that season in 2009, only had 20 catches for 260 yards and a couple of touchdowns. But little did everybody around the country know in the next year, 2010, he was about to wake everybody up. To say that Justin Blackman played out of his mind in that 2010 season, that might be understating it. And I don't even know if my words do it any justice whatsoever, so I'm going to read off some of his accolades. In that 2010 season, he won the Bolitnikoff Award, was a unanimous All-American, and also was named the Big 12 Offensive Player of the Year. How big of a deal was that, you may ask? Well, he was the first wide receiver to ever win Big 12 Offensive Player of the Year. To go on top of that, he broke the NCAA record for most consecutive games gaining 100 yards or more. Look at some of these numbers. 125, 132, 174, 127, 190, 207, and 157. That's like in a six or seven game stretch. The dude was unreal, and I could sit up here and break down every single game, but I think you get the point. But whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, wait a minute. You see this right here. He led the team in receptions or receiving yards every single game, except for this one right here. So what happened? My friend, that is a great question. I have an even better answer. You see, this is where our bumps in the road, they start to take place in our story. This game in which Justin Blackman was not the leader receiver, there's a reason for it. He was suspended. He didn't even get to play. Blackman was arrested in the midst of that 2010 Bolitnikoff Award winning season due to a DUI. And I want to clarify before I even speak on this matter and subject, 
The reason this was such a big deal at the time is because it was Justin Blackman. That's the only reason. If this was some no-namer on the team, it wouldn't even got talked about because what he did, I'm not condoning his behavior or his actions, but just wasn't something that's insane and you'll see what I'm talking about. Anyways, here's what happened. Justin Blackman and a couple of his buddies, they were going to a Cowboys game to watch former Oklahoma State wide receiver Des Bryant play because Bryant left him some tickets. Nothing bad happened at the game, they watched it. It was on the way home when Justin Blackman was clocked going 92 miles per hour. This is when the police officer also detected some alcohol on him and yeah, he wound up arresting him to make a long story short. Breaking details about the arrest of OSU star Justin Blackman. I'm Anita Blanton and for Jessica Shambach. I'm Paul Folger. Police in Texas say he was speeding and driving under the influence. Well, what's going to be interesting to see is if the Cowboys let him play on Saturday when they take on Kansas State in Manhattan after he was arrested earlier this morning. He faces charges of driving under the influence, which is a Class C misdemeanor. But a school spokesman just told me they expect the charge to be downgraded to just a speeding ticket. And there's not too much more to say after that because he was punished for it, got suspended a game, and he bounced back. I did want to throw that in because although it wasn't a big do at the time later in this video doing some foreshadowing the DUI comes back into effect following that magical and legendary season in 2010 he comes back for his junior year in 2011 and I know what some of you might be thinking yeah this junior year this is where it goes downhill he starts to get in even more trouble but that wasn't the case he played in all 13 games and he went off yet again and won the Bolitnikov. and I would argue that the 2011 season was more impressive than the 2010 season and I'll explain why the 2010 season his first year won the Bolitnikov. The teams he was going up against, they didn't even know his name. They didn't even have film on him. So it was a shock to him when he was going off. Or not a shock, my bad. A better way to say it is they weren't game planning for him. But fast forward time to 2011, everybody, they were game planning for him. And they had plans to stop him or at least attempt to stop him. And guess what? They doubled him and they even tried tripling him sometimes. But to no avail, it didn't work. I hope this puts into perspective just how good Justin Blackman was at Oklahoma State. If you held him to under 125 yards, that was a good game for your defense. I will show you his numbers though because I know y'all want to see him. He had 122 catches, so more than the 2010 season. Had 1,500 yards with 18 touchdowns. Yeah, his receiving yards dipped a little bit, but come on, man. He was still playing out of his mind. And more importantly, he was staying out of trouble, and that was a green flag. And after yet again another fantastic season in 2011, he declares for the NFL Draft. He was easily considered the best wide receiver in the draft, and he was drawing comparisons to Terrell Owens, and that was the one that everybody pointed to. And in that 2012 NFL Draft, this is where he got selected fifth overall by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Everything was going great for Blackman at this point in time. He was at the pinnacle of his football career, and more importantly, his life, because he just signed a contract that gave him a life change money but right after i'm talking about right after he got drafted in june of 2012 he got arrested for another dui first round pick justin blackman arrested on dui charges this morning and this was pretty concerning because this is now his second dui arrest in under two years and his blood alcohol content was 0.24 which was three times over the legal limit of 0.08 in oklahoma but despite that being i guess you'd label as a hiccup early on in his nfl career he did play in all 16 games for the jaguars in that up and coming season and let me tell you man he was really and i mean really good in that rookie season in 2012 he had 64 catches for 865 yards and five touchdowns not too bad not too bad at all but most importantly in that rookie season against the texans he had seven catches for 236 yards that game alone it showed and it proved that justin blackman if he stayed out of trouble he could have been one of the greats he showed flashes of greatness all the time like i said he played in all of the games during his rookie season and he was looking like a promising wide receiver in the league but here we go more troubles right after that rookie season in april of 2013 so the offseason he received a four-game suspension by the NFL. The reason he got suspended is because he violated the league's substance abuse policy. So in that 2013 season, right, misses the first four games of the year. Well, on his first game back, he catches five passes for 136 yards. If that wasn't good enough for you, how about this? In the next game, he has 14 catches for 190 yards. So you see what I'm saying? The only thing that was holding Justin Blackman back was himself. Gets suspended for the first four games of the year, comes back in the next two, it has over 130 yards in both games and nearly 201. But in that same season during one of their bye weeks, he got suspended again for violating the substance abuse policy. And I'll show it to you right here in that 2013 season. He only played in four games in which he had 29 catches for over 400 yards. So he was averaging over 100 yards a game. But the problem is, is Justin Blackman 
couldn't stay out of trouble. He got suspended for the rest of that season, and it looks like he was going to be eligible to apply for reinstatement, but he got arrested again because he had possession of Mary Jane. Justin Blackman was arrested last night in Edmond. Police stopped him for a traffic violation, and now he faces charges for possession of marijuana. Flash forward three years. Last night, Blackman once again had his mugshot taken. Here's a look at police dash cam video from the arrest. Many wonder what's next for the former OSU star. It's disappointing, disturbing, and you're seeing a case of a man flushing his career down the toilet. And here's what made it so bad for Blackman. He was already suspended once from the NFL for violating the substance abuse policy, then he does it again. So it's not like this is a warning or anything. He's already got two strikes on you. They have suspended you twice, and then he gets caught with Mary Jane, in which you're trying to get back into the league. That is the worst thing you should be doing right now. All I can say is I'm just praying that he can, you know, get the help that he needs. And I know some people are going to say, well, Matt, Mary Jane isn't bad and whatever. That's a different conversation for a different day. The point is you shouldn't even been near the stuff. You shouldn't be doing it, etc. I could go on and on, but you get my point. And in 2015, Justin Blackman, he applied to get reinstated back to the NFL, but they denied him multiple different times. And then also in 2015 as well, Blackman was arrested again for another. Take a guess. I'll let you take a guess in the comment section. A DUI. Trouble again for the same thing that has landed him in trouble before. Suspended Jaguars receiver Justin Blackman has been arrested again. Police in Oklahoma took him to jail Saturday afternoon for DUI, his fourth arrest over substance abuse. He did plead guilty to it, and in August of 2016, he was sentenced to one year in jail, which was suspended pending the completion of a one-year probation. So he was only fined about roughly $1,000. To go on top of the $1,000 fine, he had to do 100 hours of community service. And at this point in time, joining or rejoining the NFL, it's an afterthought because he just needed to get his life in check. This isn't a football matter. This is a personal matter. And here's the worst part about all of this, guys. Justin Blackman forfeited over $11.5 million because of the way his contract was constructed. Jaguars, who had drafted him, were able to construct his contract so that he had to be on the roster to collect all of his bonus money. Up to this point, Blackman has forfeited somewhere between 11 and $12 million in money based on what people say is his current addiction. He signed an $18.5 million contract, and he got the $7 million that was guaranteed, but to get the other, I think it was $11.5 million, he had to be on the roster, and he couldn't be violating the rules of the contract. So to dumb this down anymore, they didn't have to pay him the money if there was a cause for it, and yeah, with him doing what he did, there was most certainly a cause. Man, I don't even know how I could sleep at night. Could you imagine all you gotta do is show up to play football, a sport that you love your entire life, and you're going to get $10 million plus dollars? Think about that. He threw $10 million down the drain for just nonsense, and it even got to the point where you had people stating that football, quote-unquote, is not a priority in his life. What a shame, man. What a shame. And if you're wondering, yo, Matt, did he ever return back to the NFL, or did he join the Canadian League? Nope, that was it. After that year for the Jaguars and where he kept getting suspended and he reinstated, he never played after that. If you're wondering where he's at now and what he's doing, from everything I've seen, he's back in his homestead of Oklahoma and he's just chilling. I did find some pictures of him, and I mean this with no disrespect, but he does look kind of rough, and I think it's kind of odd that he's always wearing sunglasses in his pictures. And also, too, the past several years, he hasn't been arrested, at least from everything I've seen, so that's a positive. Because for a second there, it was spiraling out of control. He got arrested, I believe, with something along the lines of four times in five years for a DUI. It does appear to seem, though, that he cleared that up, and I'm happy for him, and I'm wishing him the best of luck moving forward. And although he did lose out on $11 plus million dollars in the NFL, he still made a huge chunk of money, and if he's invested it correctly and just not blown it, he should be A-OK -okay the rest of his life. But all in all, it's such a sad story just due to the fact of the what-if game. How good could he have actually been? As a rookie in the NFL, he had a game with over 230 yards. He comes back the second season and averages over 100 yards a game before he gets suspended again. And let me show y'all this comment. This was on one of our recent story videos. Matt, you say you can't feel bad for a person like Colt who had all the potential he had, but what this tells me is you simply haven't lived long enough or matured enough to understand that people turn to drugs for all types of reasons, and those reasons are ones that the user doesn't understand. 
Hence, why they turn to drugs. Are you lucky enough to have never had a friend or loved one turn to drugs? Or do you just abandon them? And I don't think the person who wrote this comment, Sean here, means anything bad by this comment. It's more so if he's asking a question. And I'll answer it to you. Yeah, I've had people extremely close to me, which I'm not going to go into detail here because my story is a different video for a different day, turn to drugs. And what I tell you guys in these videos, the advice and my philosophy, it's the same for my real life. It's relatively simple. The people in my life who have turned to those things, I just simply removed them from my life. If you're not striving to be the best version of yourself every single day, then I don't even want to be around you. I can't even stand being around mediocrity. So I can't even express enough how much I don't want to be around anything below that. If you want to do drugs or go through this life saying, oh, my life sucks. I want people to feel bad for me, et cetera, et cetera then that's fine. Stay a loser. I have zero, and I mean absolutely zero sympathy or even a tolerance for losers to the slightest of bits. Especially in America, and this is why perspective is everything because a lot of you don't think about this, but there's people in third world countries where they don't even have drinking water. There's people that don't even have houses, they don't have education, and you want me to feel bad for guys like Justin Blackman and the guy we did in the previous video, Cole Laira, who just ruined their career for no reason whatsoever. You had millions of dollars laying on the table. All you had to do was show up to practice, play football, a game that most people play for free, and you want me to feel bad for that guy? Not gonna happen, buddy. And people are so soft in 2024 because I can look at somebody who doesn't work out, who has no aspirations, they sleep till 4 p.m. every day, they do drugs and go, oh yeah, that guy's a loser, and people are still gonna comment, oh yeah, well, Matt has no sympathy whatsoever. Sympathy, what are you talking about? I do have empathy and sympathy in my life, but no, me saying somebody's a loser, that's not anything, that's not derogatory, that's just reality, that's a fact. Now with that being said, here's the bright side. For those of you that have made a couple mistakes in your life and you have done drugs, etc., hey, just because you were a loser, it doesn't mean you gotta be a loser tomorrow. You can maybe potentially become a winner. But the problem is you got certain people out here who want me to have sympathy for other people who had the world in the palm of their hands and just blew it. You want me to feel bad for that guy. Psh, ain't gonna happen, buddy. Ain't gonna happen. If you make one mistake and then you learn from it, you'll get sympathy from your boy Matt because I actually respect that and I admire that. And you guys know that because I've said it countless times in these videos. Remember the Cecil Collins video we made? I said it there. With this story and this situation, I can't feel bad for Justin Blackman. He never learned. Let me give you an example here and we're going to end up this video. What happened in this story is the equivalent. If me and Justin Blackman were hanging out, we're friends, and he touches the stove and it burns his hand. We're cooking some food. He touches it. He goes, oh, man, Matt, I just burnt my hand on that stove. It's hot. And I go, yeah, it's really hot. Don't touch it, Justin. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to touch it again. A couple minutes go by. He touches it. Ah, oh, dang, Matt. I just burnt my hand again. I'm like, yeah, Justin, I just told you for the second time, don't touch the stove I'm cooking. It's really hot. He goes, all right, all right. I ain't touching that again. Then a couple minutes go by and he does it again and again and again. It's like, all right, man. I felt bad for you the first time you burnt your hand, even the second time, but the fourth and fifth time, no. No, I don't feel bad whatsoever. And to Mr. Sean Davey here who wrote this comment, I guess you're the one who hasn't lived long enough or mature enough to understand that you can't want it for somebody else. You, sir, my friend, you're the one who has a lot of learning to do in this life because you can't want somebody else to strive for greatness. They got to want to strive for greatness. You can't want somebody to work harder, do better, etc. in their life. They got to want it at the end of the day. I did want to elaborate on that because some people think Matt's the cruelest and harshest guy to ever walk on this planet. And who knows, maybe I am. And also, maybe if you had a Matt in your life, you wouldn't be a loser. Let me know your thoughts and everything down below and leave some video recommendations down below. But, uh, roll a minute!